David here with Figboot on Pens, back again with another video. It's been quite some time since my last Q&A, so I thought it was long overdue for one. So let's get right to some questions. Um, there was a couple of questions about fountain pens and my work. Uh, Jacob asked if I still take my pens to work in rotation. Gary asked if I take my pens to work. And Louis asked whether my coworkers think I'm strange for using a fountain pen. Uh, yes, I still take my pens to work every day, uh, and I do my best to rotate through my collection, so all of the pens receive some love. On Instagram, I, uh, I used to take pictures of my pen of the day. I did that for several years, and it just felt like it was getting a bit old and repetitive, so I don't do that quite as often, uh, but I am taking a pen every day to work with me. Uh, in regard to whether my coworkers think I am strange for using a fountain pen, um, I will say that this has changed over the years. When I was first starting out in this hobby, um, I would excitedly share any new acquisition with a number of folks in the office. I I'm sure they grew sick of that. Here's David with another pen. Uh, just about all the folks I would share with um, have moved on to other jobs, so uh, I very rarely will share things with folks in the office. And not many people notice. Uh, if they do, they don't comment on it. I mentioned this on the Pen Attic podcast a few years back. I'm not sure if I mentioned it here, but there was a time when someone was being interviewed by two other managers, and they happened to mention that they were into fountain pens. Now, I'm not quite sure how that came up in the interview. Uh, the managers literally stopped the interview and giddily ran down to my office to bring the gentleman to me. Uh, they were literally giggling, uh, like they couldn't believe that there was two of us out there. It was like they were at the zoo watching two exotic wild animals seeing how they would react to one another when you put them in the same enclosure. Um, I just asked the candidate if he had a fountain pen on him, uh, and he didn't. So I thought that was a little bit odd that you would profess that you used fountain pens in an interview. First of all, I'm not quite sure how that came up again. Uh, and then he didn't even have one on him. Uh, they did actually go on to hire them, uh, uh, but he didn't stay with the company that long. Uh, Rurik asked, what are some of your favorite unexpected parts of the fountain pen hobby? Uh, for example, one thing that I really enjoy is seeing the ink drain from my Twisby Eco and then finally getting to refill it. Um, you know what? Something I really enjoy is the folding over of the cover of a new Rhodia staple bound pad. Um, I use these on a daily basis, so I go through a number of these. Uh, what you do is you, it's, this one's already folded over, but you kind of fold and fold and fold again and make it really tight, and then it folds over like that. I always kind of look forward to doing that. Um, I also uh, enjoy when it's time to change over to a new Hobonichi Techo. Um, it is getting to be that time of the year. I have my 2024 Hobo already in my possession. And sometime in December, I'll begin transferring things over and notating things like birthdays and other things. But uh, yeah, I like doing that. Um, there was a couple of questions in regard to my other hobbies. Uh, Mark asked, outside of the fountain pen world, what is your next favorite hobby? Um, I would probably say video games, uh, PC games to be more specific. Um, it's a lot of fun to get immersed in a captivating game that tells a great story, uh, as well as having a fun and challenging gameplay. Uh, in relation to that, uh, Nithin asks, uh, what is your favorite game? Uh, you know, I'm going to take that question to mean what game am I into right now? A list of my all-time favorite games would take quite a while to compile, and it would be rather extensive. Um, right now, I am begrudgingly making my way through Diablo 4. I say begrudgingly because I had very high expectations for this game. I played tons of Diablo, then Diablo 2, and then Diablo 3, and then the remaster of Diablo 2. I was really looking forward to what Diablo 4 was going to bring to the franchise. Uh, the campaign and story are decent, uh, but for a game like Diablo, it's all about the end game. Uh, that's where you are going to be spending the majority of your time. And the end game for Diablo 4 has been a major disappointment. Um, it's just extremely repetitive and gets pretty boring after a while. Um, I am currently working through a character, uh, working them up to level 100, and it is a bit of a slog. Uh, I'm up to like level 93. It'll take quite some time to get up to 100. Now, I realized that I could level a different character in a different class, uh, but I'd just be working towards the same broken endgame. 
Now, uh, they, uh, we are just about to start season two, and they have promised a number of changes going into season two, uh, but who knows? Maybe I will just go ahead and uh, finish that and level that character to 100 and then move on to a different game. Um, there, there's a few games out there that I'm looking to uh, potentially get into. Uh, there was Starfield, uh, and then I have a number of games that I haven't quite finished yet that I'm in the middle of. Uh, like there is, uh, I'll be working on Hogwarts Legacy. There is... Um, a remaster of Monkey Island uh, and there's a few other games that I've started and need to get back into. Cyberpunk, that's another one that I started and really never quite got into. Uh, it was very broken upon release uh, and now they've made a number of improvements to you to it and I think it might be better to go back to that game. Uh, so yes, I have a number of games that I need to finish but I, I'm looking forward to kind of completing Diablo 4 but hope that they uh, make some changes in the next season that it makes the overall game worth while. Uh, somebody asked, who is your favorite musical artist or band? Uh, that's a tough question. I have tons of favorite bands from a variety of genres. Um, I really love Radiohead. I'm a big fan of Sigur Rós as well as Sufjan Stevens. Uh, Sufjan just came out with a brand new album last week that's really great. Um, in regard to classic rock, I like bands like The Who and ACDC. Um, I like a lot of British post-punk as well, like the Buzzcocks and Undertones, Stiff Little Fingers, stuff like that. Uh, the Misfits are great. Um, I also love Rocket from the Crypt. They are not as well known, but anyone who knows them known they are, knows that they are the best live band in the solar system. Uh, there are probably 10 more bands I will kick myself for not mentioning here. Uh, Brian asks, have you considered designing your own pen? Not a collaboration on an existing design, but an original. Uh, yes, Brian, I have. And this is a bit of a sore point with me right now. Uh, I have actually been working for about a year and a half in order to produce a brand new pen with a small manufacturer, which I was helping to design. Uh, it was something I was really proud of and very excited to share with all of you. Uh, but the business relationship kind of went south. And to be perfectly honest, I have zero idea why. The project was going great. There had been some delays, but it was supposedly close to completion. And when all of a sudden, the manufacturer literally ghosted me. Uh, they refused to reply to any form of communication. And I have no idea why. Uh, it's really a frustrating situation. Uh, maybe one day I will run into them at a show and I will learn why they chose to cut off all communication. But like I said, I don't have a clue as to why they did. Uh, they are still very active in the pen world, so it's not like they went away. Um, I don't want to publicly disparage this manufacturer, so I'm going to refrain from mentioning who it is, but who knows? Maybe one day I will learn what happened. But chances are, even though it would have been a very cool pen, that project will most likely never see the light of day. But on a positive note, I am currently working with a couple of more reliable business relationships to produce a couple of uh, new pens. So look for that somewhat in the near future. Uh, very close to the near future for one of them, and then the other might be about a year away due to production schedules. Um, I'm a little biased, but the custom material we created for that second project is really, really cool. Something you've never seen before. Um, there's been material with similar properties, but I haven't seen anything quite like this before. But things are progressing nicely with those upcoming projects, and I'm really looking forward to the time when I can share more. Chris asks, how do you feel about the Padres season this year? And Dane asks what I thought about the current team, and what would you alter to improve their World Series chances? Um, okay, I, I am a lifelong Padre fan. If you don't follow sports that much, they are the baseball team from San Diego. Historically, while the team has had a few good seasons, they have had significantly more terrible seasons. So any long-standing Padre fan is a long-suffering fan. At the beginning of any season, you want your team to do well. There are some years when you know in your heart of hearts that your team doesn't have the players to compete, but you have hope. Then there are some seasons, like this past year, when on paper, your team is stacked. There was lots of national publications predicting the Padres would win their first championship this season. Expectations for this season were through the roof, and the team produced, or proceeded to significantly underperform. Uh, 
This was quite possibly the most frustrating season I can remember. There was no good explanation as to why they weren't winning games. Uh, they have a pitcher who is most likely going to win the Cy Young Award. Uh, they had the second best team on ERA. Uh, they had a closer who was great with a 1.16 ERA. Uh, they had a th the third highest FWAR in the National League, and they had the third fewest errors in the Major League Baseball. On paper, they should have had an incredible season, but they didn't. But I guess that's why you play the games. Um, you know, what do I think that they should do for the next season? Uh, you know, I'm not going to turn this into Padres talk, but uh, I think they need to sign Soto. They need to extend him. He's one of the best players on the team. Uh, they also need to uh, extend Hassan Kim. Uh, maybe also pick up the options on Waka as well as uh, Lugo. I think that those are uh, something that they need to do. Uh, they need to fill out their bullpen because they're going to be losing Hader and a couple of other bullpen pieces. Uh, and then I think they need to focus on first base as well as center field. Their center fielder has not been producing. Uh, and then first base has been a bit of a hole for us. There is talk about Bogarts actually moving over to first. So then Kim could play, uh, play shortstop. Uh, and then uh, Cronenworth can play more of his natural position, which is second base. Um, okay, that is enough Padre talk. Let's move on to more pen talk. You might have noticed there's no video ads in this Q&A. Uh, that's because this video has a sponsor, which would be FlexiSpot. Uh, you might recall a few months ago, I renovated my office. A big part of that renovation was upgrading my desk with a standing desk from FlexiSpot. I have very much enjoyed that desk. It's a solid product. I use it as my everyday desk. The company contacted me again and asked if I would care to check out one of their ergonomic chairs. I said yes, and for the next minute or so, I'm going to let you know about my experiences with it. Uh, the chair is their C7 Pro. Uh, it arrives in this box. Uh, it was convenient having it delivered right to my door. Uh, I have assembled many office chairs in my day, and this one was pretty standard. Um, I like that they provided spare bolts just in case you, one was missing or you lost one during the assembly process. I probably could have assembled it without the instructions, but they were still clear and easy to follow, and everything went together just fine. Um, I do like the multitude of ways this chair can be adjusted. You can adjust the headrest, the armrests, as well as the lumbar support. Um, I do like that the seat can be adjusted forward and back as well. The wheels are nice and smooth. Having good wheels on a chair is important for me. I'm always rolling around to different areas of my office. Uh, I will say that the mesh on the chair does take a bit of getting used to compared to the more plusher chairs I have used. Uh, they do offer a version of this chair which does have a padded seat as opposed to the mesh. And the padded model does have a lower price point. The FlexiSpot C7 Pro is available through the company website. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. Uh, it normally retails for around $550, but it's currently on sale for a $130 discount, which equates to around 25% off, taking the price down to $420. Uh, and like I mentioned, the padded seat version has a lower price point. Thanks again. Go out to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Uh, there was no financial compensation, and I am not rewarded if you should make a purchase, uh, but they did provide me with a chair, which is currently being enjoyed by a family member at their desk here at home. Okay, this is actually a question from the last Q&A I did, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, they asked, what is your most underrated video you made? Something you really liked, but it underperformed for some reason. Now, I don't do these videos for views or likes. Um, I understand the pool I'm swimming in. Fountain pens are a rather niche topic, especially here on YouTube. Um, I have been fortunate to have a few somewhat successful videos which have had some reach outside of the fountain pen community. But in regard to something I thought might do well but underperformed to my potential expectations, um, a while back, I did a review of a 2000 segment pen made by a gentleman by the name of James Garwood. Uh, he has a woodworking YouTube channel of his own, and his video he created about making this pen has almost 2 million views. So I thought that a review of that pen might have a, uh, let's say, a wider appeal. But unfortunately, it did not. I mean, it performed well, uh, almost 8,000 views, but nothing spectacular. 
Um, I've had a few travel videos that I thought might do better than they did as well, but uh, nothing too terrible. Mara asks, do you make ink sample cards on the same paper you write on? Um, no, I use these uh, Namasini word cards. Uh, and these are just my blue inks. You see, I might have an ink problem, um, but I'll kind of fan this out so you can see some of them. Uh, but they discontinued these uh, cards a few years ago, unfortunately. Uh, before that happened, I purchased like five of these thinking that it would be a lifetime supply, but sadly, I was wrong. Um, I'm almost through the last of them. But the good news is that there is a great alternative to these, which is the... Colo ring. Um, it's slightly smaller, which will be a slight annoyance when the two versions are actually combined, but the paper is actually a bit higher quality, so that's nice. So once I'm out of these uh, word cards, then I'll switch over to using these color rings, which are widely available from a number of retailers, and it won't be a huge transition. Uh, Sergio asks, uh, what is the story with the shaving cream can behind you? Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you learned about this can. Um, if you have seen the film Jurassic Park, you might know what this is. This is a replica cryo can. You lift that up, and this is from the actual movie uh, of Jurassic Park. Um, I thought that it would be a fun way to transport ink samples because there's little vials in here. Now, these vials are rather small, but I just thought it'd be a fun thing to travel, uh, to have ink travel with. Now, I don't think I should take this through the airport security anytime soon, uh, but maybe just to one of the shows I drive to. So, yeah, it's just something fun and a reference to a, a neat old movie. Um, there are always uh, questions about the cubes and the meaning behind them. Uh, in the patterns. Um, sometimes the pattern means something and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I might make the colors relate to the pen in some way. Um, I've been known to make flags of countries of origin and stuff like that. But other times it's just a random pattern, just something to visually mix things up. Uh, there were a couple of questions that I've devoted entire videos to answering. Um, a number of questions about pen storage. Um, I have two or three videos on my channel about that. I'll put a link to a couple of those in the notes below this video. Uh, there was also a couple of questions relating to my review process and production setup. I've covered that a few times in dedicated videos as well, and I'll put a link to one of those below as well. Um, Chelsea, Chelsea asked, um, how can you tell the difference between a plastic and ebonite feed? Uh, you know, I've answered this in a previous Q&A, but it's a common question. Um, when I first started off in this hobby, that was a question I had myself. Uh, you hear people talk about plastic and ebonite feeds, but I was really never sure when I was looking at an ebonite feed. But once you know what to look for, it's very simple to tell the difference. Here is a typical plastic feed. Uh, you can see the deep fins. Plastic feeds can come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, here's a different looking one on the Mont Blanc Star Walker. Uh, that one almost looks like a high-heeled wedge sandal. Uh, here's a red plastic feed. Um, often you will see them with a number on the bottom to indicate the type of nib that they go with. And here's an ebonite feed. Uh, you'll notice that there aren't any fins. Uh, the slits on the side don't go all the way down around to the bottom. And you can uh, notice the grain of the ebonite. That's the big thing. Ebonite is essentially a very hard rubber, so it will have those grains as opposed to the slick look of plastic. Um, here's another ebonite feed, and as you can see again, there's that cross-cut grain. And here's one more example where these slits go across the entire length of the feed. Um, ebonite feeds have a tendency to have a, a bit of a lower profile as well. Um, there's a feeling like, that a lot of people have that ebonite feeds are superior and encourage superior ink flow. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. There's so many factors that go into ink flow that it's really tough to compare nibs uh, and make that assessment. In my opinion, ebonite fiends look a little bit cooler, so they have that going for them, but I can't say for certain whether or not they perform better than their plastic counterparts. Um, Dan asks, do you decide uh, what pens to review or are you asked to do so? Uh, you know, it's really a combination of a number of things. 
I have retailers or manufacturers who reach out to me and I will decide whether or not uh, what they are offering would make for an interesting review. Sometimes I will reach out to companies if there's something of particular interest that I think you would care to know more about. Um, I also review things from my own collection. Typically, I have a queue of about literally 10 to 20 pens that I need to review and inks. Uh, so if something is provided to me, it's typically a month or two before I can turn something around. But then again, there's been times when someone has lent me uh, like a very expensive pen. And on those occasions, I'll work to produce something sooner rather than later so I can return this item as quickly as possible. Okay, to wrap things up, we have some rapid fire questions with short or short-ish answers. Uh, how many fountain pens do you own? Uh, I always answer too many. Uh, do you still root for the Chargers? Uh, I do not. Um, I watch the games, but I no longer have an emotional attachment. Uh, if you are not aware, a few years back, the owners abandoned San Diego and moved the team up to Los Angeles. Um, I have no issues with the players, but I have a deep-seated resentment for the owners. Uh, and I hate that they took that emotional attachment from me. Um, I was a real diehard Chargers fan. Uh, what is your golf handicap? Uh, worse than it used to be. Uh, at my best, I was an 11 or 12. Nowadays, I'm playing to more of a 15 or 16. Uh, what shows do you plan on attending? Uh, next year, I, I plan on attending the Atlanta show. Then the Triangle show is in nearby Raleigh. Uh, and then D.C., uh, there is an outside chance that I'll make it out to San Francisco as well. But that's tough since uh, it's so close to the D.C. show. I had a blast when I was out there two years ago and would really like to get back there. Um, I'm hearing great things about the Orlando show as well. Who knows? Maybe one year I'll make it down to that one as well. Um, do you do any of your own nib grinding? I do not. Uh, I am not an incredibly artistic person and I'm not incredibly talented with skills requiring precision. And I feel that nib grinding is something which kind of really needs both of those skills. I, I just really feel that I'll mess up a nib if I try to do that. So I leave that up to the experts who are very talented uh, and they can come see me when they have a, a burning Excel question. Um, do you do, uh, or I'm sorry, no, um, how does your family like your fountain pen hobby and do they use fountain pens as well? Uh, no, no one else in the household is interested in fountain pens and they could not care less about my hobby. And that's okay. We have our different things that we're into. Some of our hobbies are shared uh, with one or more members of the household and other hobbies are more personal. Uh, did you ever find a Parker pen that makes you happy? Uh, yes, uh, the modern dual fold Centennial Big Red. Uh, I just love everything about it. It's one of my favorite pens in my collection. But uh, actually look forward to, uh, to a review of another Parker pen coming up in the near future that I've enjoyed testing as well. Uh, and then finally, um, are you an Excel guru? Um, you know, I better be. Uh, now, it's a significant part of my job. While there is always someone out there who knows more about something than you do, um, I feel I'm fairly ad a fairly advanced user. Uh, maybe that's me just being modest. Uh, I, I am smarter than the average bear when it comes to Excel. Oh, there's one more. Uh, what is your favorite airplane and why? Um, that's, first of all, I thought that was a strange question, but while I love to travel, lately it has been a bit of a pain with tons of canceled flights, so my favorite airplane is one that is on time and actually gets to me to where I am going, when it originally was scheduled to be there. I know that's asking a lot, but it's been a challenge lately for airlines to actually do that. Okay. I think that's enough Q&A for today. Um, I say this every time I do one of these, but I should get to them a little bit more often. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions as part of a giveaway for a pen from Motor City Pens. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.